Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Kingdom Praise Ministry. Yes. Woo! And happy, happy, happy New Year's. Happy, happy New Year. Year. I don't know what 2024 is going to bring, but I know whatever it is, God is in control. Yes. So, let's start off with a word of prayer as people tune in. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we just thank you, Father, for your mercy, your grace, Lord. We thank you, Father, for just watching over us, Lord, throughout the nights and throughout the weeks, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us to this house of um, service, Lord, one more time, Father God. We thank you, Father, for just keeping us in your keeping power, Lord. Father God, we just continue to ask you, Father, for your grace and your mercy that you continue to watch over us, continue to help us to grow in your word, continue to help us to hear and receive your word, Father God. Lord, we just thank you, Father God, because you are awesome, Father God. Without you, we can't do anything, Lord. So, Lord, we just present everything to you, Father God. We're not going to worry about anything, Lord, because we found out worrying don't do anything, Lord. But, Father God, we cast all of our cares on you, Lord. And we just want to trust that you're going to give us the best, Lord. Help us to be the best Christians that we can be, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be <clears throat> Christians and exemplify your characteristics, Father God. And Father God, we just thank you for all that you're going to do in our lives, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, I hope you were able to join us this morning for Sunday School Lesson. This morning our lesson was taught by Deaconess Rosalind. Um, and the title was Faith and Righteousness. The devotional reading came from Romans chapter 5, verses 12 to 21. And the background scriptures, as well as the lessons, came from Hebrews chapter 11. And you, but if you get an opportunity to read Hebrews, Hebrews that is that faith chapter, but it talked about what various people went through, from Abraham to Moses to Rahab, all the way down the line. And the best thing about this chapter is, it lets you know that nobody's perfect, because everybody has some sin in their lives. They were deceivers, manipulators, schemers. But God used them because they put their trust in God. And they tried to exemplify God's um, characteristics, his faith, by being believers and doing what God called them to do. Just because you sin in your life <clears throat> doesn't mean that you can't change. Because truth being told, there is no perfect individual. Yeah. No matter how much we try, no matter how much we strive, we all have some kind of flaws. But when we put our trust in God and try to do what God calls us to do, he'll open doors for us. And sometimes he'll close doors that he don't want us to go through. But when you get an opportunity, go back and read through that chapter, um, Hebrews chapter 11, and the lesson, Faith and Righteousness. The lesson will be posted on YouTube as well as Facebook. I think it's posted on Facebook now, but be posted on YouTube later on this evening. Now, next week's lesson... It's called Faith and Trust. The devotional reading is from Psalms chapter 57, 56, excuse me, Psalms 56. The background scripture is going to come from Proverbs chapter 3. Read the entire chapter. And next week's lesson is going to be taught by our own minister, Michael Eccles Jr. Okay. As far as announcements concerned, remember, Thursday night, Bible study starts again, January 11th at 7 p.m. And you can attend lessons by Facebook. And if you have any questions during the lesson, please type those questions into the comments so we can address those, Pastor can address those comments or questions as he um, go through the lesson. Outreach is going to be Saturday, January the 27th. We're going to meet at Fayette and Front Street at 7.30 a.m. so we can set up and be ready to minister to the people at 8 o'clock. We do stand in need of some blankets. If anybody have any blankets they want to donate and coats for men as well as females. Um, as another thing, remember the first and second week of the month is we're here on Rolling Road, so the address here is 2516 Rolling Road. We'll be here next Sunday as well, so please come out and join us for service. 
and then the third and fourth Sunday will be in Harper County, um, 612 Henderson Road. Today is also Communion Sunday, so if you're attending by um, virtual, if you're attending by Facebook, if you don't have the Communion Cups, then you can get something together so you can have communion with us. But also, if you need communion cups for those who are sick and shut in or can't make it out, please send us something so we can get that um, those communion cups to you for next Sunday. Okay. All right. There is a word from the Lord today. Amen. And following our Samaritan selection, Pastor Echoes will bring forth part 14 of the recipe for victory. And we're still dealing with ingredient number three, rely on the Lord. So when you get opportunity, I want you to go to Philippians chapter four. I'm gonna be reading verses one through six. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And as soon as I finish reading, then we have our Samana selection and then the word of Pastor John, Pastor Eccles. Um, let's stand for the reading of the word. Philippians chapter 4. Let me know when you get there. Mm -hmm. Everybody there? Yeah. Okay. Present. Therefore, my, therefore, my beloved and long for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. I implored Eurotius and I implored Syntyche, to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companion, <clears throat> help these women who will labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Amen. 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 Again, we lie on the Lord. It's a, and the title of the sermon, Recipe for Victory. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, family. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. That wasn't loud enough. Praise the Lord, family. Oh, praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise Amen. Him. Anybody just in a worshiping spirit yes. this morning? Put your hands together. We're just grateful to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing this song. It's one of my father's favorites. And if you know it, just sing along. I'm going to ask y'all to sing along later in the song anyway. <laughs> okay. Yes, the Lord. Sorry. <clears throat> Take your time, baby. Mm -hmm. Take your time. We'll bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait, King of glory, fill this place? We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. King of glory, Fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Yes, yes, yes. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Yes. Why would we wait? We can praise you now in victory. King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. 
We just want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. So we'll sing hallelujah until you come again. And we'll dance in your presence until you come again. Yes, yes I'll sing hallelujah until you come again. Yes. And I'll dance in your presence until you come again. Yes. Yes, we'll sing hallelujah. Until you come again. And we'll dance in your presence. Dance in your presence. Dance in your presence. Dance in your presence. King of glory. Feel this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. I just want you. I just want you. Yes. Yes, Lord. I just yes. want you. I just want you. Yes, Lord. I just want you, I just want you. Nobody else will do. Nobody else will do. Sing with me. I just want you, I just want you. I just want you, I just want you. I just want you, I just want you. Nobody else will do. Nobody else will do. One more time. I just want you, I just want you. I just want you, I just want you. I just want you, I just want you. Nobody else will do, nobody else will do. King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. King of glory, feel this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. Amen. Let us worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's all right. Take a name. It's all right to worship. It's all right to worship. Amen. 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 Let God know you just want to be with them. Amen. Amen. And how um, awesome the God we serve is. Yes. And every time I think I understand him, I see a whole other realm of who he is. Mm -hmm. How can we properly represent a God who can't be represented? Mm -hmm. How can we explain a uh, unlimited God and we're so limited? How can we come before the presence of his perfect holiness and even face him? How can we even imagine, you know, he could communicate with his creation and accommodate us by telling us things about his glory and his mercy? And what should be our response? Our response should always be, I worship you. And I humbly come before him. And recognize I was thanking God today, he's thanking God just for the opportunity to serve him. Amen. Amen. Just for the opportunity to glorify his name one more time. So we're grateful today for all the Lord has done. We thank God for the opportunity to worship once again in this house. We thank God for all his blessings. And I won't be before you long, but I want to be before you and, and remind you of this year. Uh, we want to, as a church, uh, make up in our minds that this year we're going to trust God like we never did before. Amen. 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 And, you know, I, I, have to tell you, I have to say this to you. That in order to have anything happen different in your life, you got to do something differently. Yeah. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. If you want something different, you can't keep doing the same thing and expect different results. And this year, make up in your mind, in 24, you want more. Amen. Come on down, 24, I want more. And I want you to think about more money and more clothes. I want you to think about my relationship with God. I want more Amen. out of my relationship with God. Amen. Can we do that together Amen. as a family and grow together? Because you know what's going to happen? Is that as you put him first, all the things you think you need going to fall in place. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. As you seek to have your life brought under the dictates of God and align yourself with God, then the other stuff, gonna, the other stuff you think is going to fall in place. And the stuff you think you need will no longer be important to you. Mm -hmm. Because you got the best thing you got, Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He has a way of giving you something better. We, we settle for good, but God's got something better. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't settle for good. Take it, David. Don't settle. Don't settle. Don't settle. Don't settle. Don't settle. Don't settle. Because God's got the best for your life. Amen. Amen. How many believe that? Amen. Amen. If you realize that God we serve, y'all know he's limitless. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's limited. And that's hard for us to put in words. Why? Because we're limited. Yeah. But God's not lacking in anything. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need anything. That's right. He doesn't want anything. Because he's everything in and of himself. He's called the great I am. Yes. And so we have the opportunity as limited individuals to come before him and make our request known. Amen. Amen. And guess what? When you have a desire just to get closer, God will make a way for you to do that. Amen. 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 So that will be our desire. And, and check, check this out. When you, when you say, I want to come close to God, God's going to start rearranging things in your life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He's going to start rearranging some stuff. And I'm going to tell you this. Salvation is free, but discipleship is going to cost you. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Amen. Salvation is free, but to be his disciple, that means it's going to cost you in the sense that he may put his hand on a thing that you want to do, but he said, I no longer want you to do it. Amen. 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 He may put. Now this is a hard one, y'all. This is not what I came to preach, but I'm a flow in this, all right? Say flow preacher. Flow preacher. He may put his hand on a relationship that you want to keep. He may put his hand on the situation that you're in. That's not his best will for your life. But we must realize this: that our Father knows what's best for us. Amen. Amen. He wants us to rely on him. Do not take the shortcut. Take the right cut. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Don't play with this thing. Say, Lord, I'm going to do this thing right. I want to do it real. And I want to be real before you and watch God move in your life. All right. But we're here today dealing with the recipe of victory. And this morning, um, we I had a little more verses read because I wanted us to get the context of this, of what's going on. We've discussed three ingredients thus far. Rejoice, reflect, and rely. And Father, as we come today, we speak to our hearts afresh and anew as we seek to uh, let this year of 24 draw, we want to draw closer to you. We want more of our relationship now out of our relationship with you. So help us in our effort to know you better. And we ask it all in Christ's name. Be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Rejoice, reflect, rely. We talked about rejoicing in the Lord. That's a practice of our life. We should always be in the attitude of rejoicing. And my children and wife always remind me <laughs> constantly, as soon as I say something, rejoice. rejoice. They say rejoice. And so I'm starting to get them back now. <laughs> but anyway, we try to remind each other. And it's done in fun, but it's also done to bring our minds back to what you ought to be doing. And also rejoice in the Lord, reflect in the Lord, rely, re rely on the Lord. Um... There, I'm posting this morning a job ad in the one. They still have one section. They still do one sections in the newspaper, I think. This morning, I want to post. I want to post this in, in the one ads of our local newspaper. Uh, this morning, it's uh, for requirements for this person is a person. This person must be overly concerned about everything. I don't know if anybody uh, is able to meet this one ad. This person must be able to base. All possible dangers or misfortunes as a basis for their lives. Anybody qualify to run to the worst thing at all times? <clears throat> this one ad. This person must possess the skill set that continually characterizes uneasiness of mind and fear of failure. Anybody qualify? Mm -hmm. Y'all got quiet. Anybody qualify for this position? This is a position. It's open. This person must possess the skill set. 
that continually characterizes uneasiness of mind and fear of failure. This person must be capable of a vivid imagination of expectation for disappointment in all situations. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm not down somebody's street. This person must have a mindset of fear of failure. Did I come down your street yet? When presented with the possibility of change in their lives, this person says, I can't do it. Anybody qualify this morning mm -hmm. to one end? This individual must be able to attempt to carry the burdens of uncertain failure, of the uncertain future by themselves. The burden of uncertain future. This person must be required to carry that load. Mm -hmm. Is anybody here qualified for this position this morning? The one that's gone out. Y'all got real quiet, not me, but, but sure, somewhere down this line, we all could raise our head and say, well, I think I qualify for that position. But I want you this morning not to answer that ad any longer this year. Amen. Amen. We're not going to look for the worst of things. We're going to look for the best of things. Mm -hmm. It's not a, a idea of positive attitude. It's an idea of biblical thinking. Yes. Amen. 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 Biblical thinking. And we know what the Bible says to us. We in this uh, third ingredient, and one thing that I didn't miss, one little um, tidbit I missed as we were going through the ingredients, one little phrase in verse 5 of this chapter. It says, let your moderation be known unto all men. And this one phrase I didn't talk about, the Lord is at hand. Mm -hmm. Amen, the Lord is at hand. And mm -hmm. <laughs> funny that oftentimes I think about food when I think about illustrations. <laughs> you know, because some things I don't need at hand, right? How many of you don't need snacks at hand? Mm -hmm. nope. You don't need, uh, y'all remember back in the day where you didn't have remote control? <laughs> some of y'all too young now to know that, but I'm looking around the room and some of y'all know what it is to have to, every time you had to change the channel, you had to what? Get up or send somebody to change the channel and to do what else? Fix the rabbit ear. Fix the rabbit ear <laughs> antenna because you had to, and sometimes you had to stand by the TV to get the, the channel that you wanted to watch because as right. soon as you move, this channel would just disappear. Mm -hmm. But now we're in the age of what? Remote controls. Mm -hmm. And now what? We want it what? At hand. We want it near. So what about the phrase, the Lord is at hand? The Lord is at hand. The Lord is at hand simply means the Lord is near. Mm -hmm. Amen. There is a... Uh, Two, there are two ways to interpret this particular passage of scripture. It can refer to either time or space. Y'all say it with me. Time, time or, space. or space. Amen. Paul may have meant that the Lord was coming near in terms of time. How many know the Lord's coming back? Mm -hmm. Y'all look around Amen. and see that this thing can't go on but so much longer. You can't even look to the highest office of this, of this country right now and say you can find sanity. Mm -hmm. Y'all know I'm telling yes. the truth. You can't look to the lawmakers to keep the very law they're supposed to oversee. They expect for the people who follow them to keep the laws when the laws don't apply to the ones who are supposed to be enforcing the laws. Mm -hmm. Sanity is gone. And why is sanity gone? Because when a man loses his purpose and loses his way, he goes the way he thinks is best for him. And as a result, we have what we have now. The, our biggest problem, and it have, not only applies to the world, it applies to the, those of us that call ourselves Christians. Our biggest problem is we are rebellious. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because we think somehow that if I do it my way, it's going to work out all right. God says do it this way, but we say what? Do it this way, because this way is better for me. Side eye. I'm going to side eye and go. He knows what he's talking about. He knows what's best. So, in essence, we're saying we don't want you to rule us. We want to rule us. So, what we've done is that we try to unseat God, which is impossible. And to place ourselves on our own throne and go our way. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we're in this state called rebellious. Rebellious. Rebell being in a state of rebelliousness. Amen. Amen. That's our biggest problem. And now what God wants to do is let us see that 
I want you to come my way. And when you submit to my way, everything else that you desire is going to fall in place. How do I know? Because the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So you seek God, he puts your life in place. I'm not saying everything will be right, but I'm saying this. Is that God is wise enough to take, wise enough to take care of us. Amen. He's wise enough to do that. And even when he allows things that we don't want, guess what? He still says it's for our good. How I many know we're just not smart enough and bright enough to keep this thing together? You're looking for God to come in the front door. What does he do? He come around back some way and say, here I am. We not only want to pray, we want to demand that God do it our way. But God allows even tragedy in our lives. And I know I'm, I'm telling the truth. He allows tragedy in our lives to get us to a place where we only have him to look to. Yeah. So maybe God pushing you in the corner. Anybody feel, feel pushing the corner? Maybe he's got you in a place where you, your friends don't work anymore for you. Your drugs not work anymore. You got some good. I know some of y'all got some good drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and some of us on we on some of us are on uh, prescription drugs. And we need a drug to what? Go to sleep. Another drug to wake up. And another drug to function. That's not living. You know what living is? Living is not depending on anything outside to make it. Amen. That's living, y'all. That's independence. Independence is having a joy that's not dependent upon what's happening to me, but because of what's happening in me. Yeah. Amen. I got stuff that's happening in me, can't nothing do outside affect what's going to me. It's not going to affect me. Amen. When I got something going on in me, the stuff happening outside, I can't control that. I can't control Beverly when the boss is crazy, the job is crazy. I can't control when the employees are crazy. I can't control even when the church is crazy. What I can control is what God is doing in my life. Mm -hmm. How am I going to respond to it? Am I going to respond out of my flesh or am I going to respond out of what God wants me to do? Y'all hear him. You hear him all the time. You hear him. You say, oh, I don't hear from God. You should, if you're a child of God, he said, my sheep no more. You hear from him all the time. He's speaking now. All time. You hear him say, don't say anymore. I know I got a witness somewhere. That's enough. You hear him say, that's enough. Be still. You hear him say, don't get involved with that. Mm -hmm. You hear him say, that person shouldn't be in your life. Yeah. You hear him say these things, but you know what? We think we know what's best for us, and we get in the mess, you know, we say, oh, the devil after me. No, the devil ain't had nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. Disobedience. He, he, he gone somewhere else. You know why? Because you all twisting and turning yourself. You know, I, let me go somewhere else. Somebody really need me to deceive them. Yep. This person deceived themselves. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. This per I think I got to go over there. You know why? Because they, they're all in their own mind, own head. All they got, matter of fact, I know what makes them tick. How many of them make you know what makes you tick? Mm -hmm. All they got to do is show them something and keep moving. Yeah. I said to you guys some time ago, and I'll go back there again. I said, what, what would you do? If the greatest thing to tempt you was put in front of your face. Let's have a think about that. Has God so worked in you that you can look at the stuff that tempts you and say no to it? Have we built up those kind of strengths? In our lives by depending on God. This comes by depending on God. To the place that the stuff that we're weak for, we're strong in. I know that sounds crazy, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. That's what Paul said, didn't he? Yes. Paul said, when I'm weak, I'm strong. That sound crazy? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. That, that don't make sense. Paul said, when I'm weak, I'm strong. What in the world is Paul talking about? Paul said, I glory in my weaknesses. How many of y'all want to glory? You know, I'm weak over there. Thank God, that's my weakness. How many feel like that? None of us. We want to avoid. That's why I'm not going over there because I can't handle it. I'm not going to that place. I can't control myself. I'm not calling that friend because I'm, I'm going to get some guy. I can't. You know, we always try to avoid stuff. But, but Paul said, I know where I'm weak. So one of my big problems, we don't know where our weaknesses are. But the devil knows where your weakness is. He knows what you're weak for. So Paul said, I glory in my weaknesses. Why? Because every weakness is an opportunity. Come on now. Y'all say it with me. Every weakness, every weakness is an opportunity. Is an opportunity. 
Every character flaw is an opportunity. Come on, y'all say it with me. Every character flaw. Every, Every character, character flaw, flaw is an opportunity. Every temptation is an opportunity. Every temptation is an opportunity. What you talking about, preacher? What are you talking about this morning? Because every temptation, you know what the Lord said? He'll also make a way of escape. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Everything. He said there's no temptation that's taking you, but such as is common to man. You think you're going through by yourself. You're not going through anything by you. You think nobody's been in that road before? Yeah, people been in that road before. You think nobody's suffering like you? Yeah, somebody's suffering. Nobody's lonely like you? Yeah, somebody's been lonely like you. But he says, with the temptation, he also makes a way out. Amen. 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 Which means I'm not a victim to my temptation. I'm not a victim or victimized by my weaknesses. Because now, although I know I'm weak in this area, I have learned something. You know what Paul learned? He said, I've learned to depend on God. Yes. And then we talked about this morning. I went around about it, didn't I? <laughs> when he would come to the text. I learned to rely on God. Because now, sometimes even now, I feel it. I say, well, you know what? Those thoughts are coming from the past. Those temptation lowers coming to the past. And I think to myself, whoa, I'm so bad. I said, y'all feel like that? How can I say I'm a Christian? All these terrible things are going in my heart. And I start going in my corner of feeling victimized. Like, I'm a victim and I need this. I, I can't make it through the strength. And God reminds me, fool. Don't you know you don't have to rely on you? That's right. That's remind me. Talk, fool, you know you don't have to rely on you. Touch yourself and say, I don't have to. I don't have to. Rely on me. Rely on me. But I can trust God. But I can trust God. Last time I doubt, anybody have that self-doubt? Come on. How many have self-doubt? You know what? I stopped fighting it. I know it sounds crazy. Because God let me know, it's okay to doubt you, but don't doubt me. Amen. Come on now, someone. Y'all get your, catch your freedom. Can't catch your freedom. Reach up and catch your freedom. It's okay to accept the fact I know I'm human. I know I'm subject to make mistakes. I told somebody some time ago, I deserve, I need a, a, a caution. I need a yellow jacket with a caution sign and cones put around me. Because what? Caution. What? He's still under construction. Come on now. How many, how many feel like you need that around you? Now I'm still under construction. But yet, I'm under construction, but I'm under his construction. Amen. Amen. I may be flawed, but what? I'm in his hand. Any good news? And that same potter can know how to put my life back together again if I rely upon him. So we want to deal. He says the Lord is at hand. The Lord is at hand. The Lord is near. So I want to talk to you this morning for a few moments about the nearness of God. Amen. Amen. And this, this third ingredient is related how? Because he says in that verse, he says, uh, the Lord is at hand. Then he says rejoice in the Lord. Amen. The Lord is at hand. So in order for me let me read that verse again. Philippians 4, 5. Let your gentleness be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Then he says, be anxious for nothing. Mm -hmm. Pull those together. How can I be anxious for nothing? Because the Lord is at hand. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That means the Lord is near. Uh, Paul, as I, I, Paul can also, I told you two things earlier. This can be time. can also mean space. We can say the Lord is coming back. He is coming back. We can also say the Lord is close to us. Uh, when he said the Lord is at hand. Which one is true? Which one is true? Oh. Yes. <laughs> Both are true. He's coming back, but he's also at hand. It means that whenever I need him. Amen. He's coming back. Yeah, he, he's coming back. To get my life together because he's coming in any moment, right? Any moment he's coming back. But also, I know he's near right now at hand. Both are true. The Lord is returning soon. So he's telling, in the context, he's telling these two women, Eurodia and Syntyche. I didn't talk about them yet, much through this whole series, but in context, we read it. These two women were having some kind of squirmish. We're not told what the argument is. But these were women who were Christian women who were not getting along. Y'all heard what I said to you? That's Christians sometimes don't get along. But the problem is, is when we disagree, we become disagreeable. The problem is, is when there's a skirmish, we start treating the other person as if they don't know God. 
And Paul is saying, these women can't get it together. I want you brothers to go in there. These church members to go in there and help these women because they labor with me in the gospel. Mm -hmm. So that tells me a lot about that first century, century church. It tells me although they were serving God, they weren't perfect. Mm -hmm. Although they were serving God, there was still some confusion. Although they were serving God, there was still some disagreements. But yet they were still brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm -hmm. Not been involved in situations where people have a disagreement with you and they write you off. Hello. Amen. Anybody been there? Yeah. And nobody in Kingdom Praise Ministry is going to do that, right? If there's a disagreement or somebody decides they're going to leave and they disagree with something, we're not going to treat them as if they're no longer our brother and sister. Because no matter where you belong, guess what? Church denominations and labels are man-made. But what's bigger than the church is a family. Amen. The family of God. Body of and every time we do something to each other, the Lord said, you do that to me. Mm -hmm. That's pretty serious, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. We mistreat each other, the Lord takes it personally. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Isn't that what he said to, to Saul when he was persecuting the church? Yeah. Why are you persecuting me? Not why are you persecuting the church. He said, why are you persecuting me? Because every time you raise up against my children, you raise up against me. How many of God takes you personally? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we mistreat each other. We mistreat Christ. Something about that. When we write each other off, we're writing off Christ. When we stop speaking to each other, we stop speaking to Christ. Why? Because Christ is not. What if, if, if Mary, if Mary, the mother of Jesus, was right here and she was standing before us, we knew that she was carrying the Christ child, what would we do for her? Whatever we could. Mary, what you need? Mary, sit down in the best chair. Mary, come on, you know. You know, blessed are you among women. We would treat her with such respect. Why? Why was she here? Because she was a peasant woman? No. Because she lived in poverty? No, we wouldn't treat her respect because of that. We treat her with respect because she was carrying Christ. Mm -hmm. But look around this room. And everybody who is saved, guess what? Carrying Christ. Carrying Christ. Amen. Amen. We have to learn how to treat each other and value each other in our own uh, situations. We got to learn how to treat each other that way. The Lord is near. The Lord is soon to return. The Lord is near in space and he's at hand. The Lord is near. And because he is near, guess what? He sees everything. Mm -hmm. He knows everything. Anybody ever thought about that? You ever sat in your little corner thinking that you only know, you're the only one that knows about your battles? Mm -hmm. I was thinking last night, I got some battles I can't share with you. Y'all got any battles you can't share with anybody? <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, if I could just have somebody I could just talk to and tell them my real struggles, I'd give them the PG version. I got some other versions I can't share with them. You know why? Because they couldn't accept me for my struggles. But what is the church supposed to be about? Condemning folk for struggles or accepting them. But you know what you can share and can't share. Right? You way out. But I want to let you know you got someone who's near you. Who is, you're able to tell him whatever because what? He already knows it. An amazing thing that he never rejects me although he knows me. Amen. He won't give me the side eye. No cat. <laughs> he, won't, he won't give me the side eye. He will see me as I am and love me as I am and also love me out of what I am. Isn't that good news? God has a way of showing me so much love that it transforms me from one place to another place. He sees me. Not only does he see me, he knows me. Not only does he know me, he'll fight for me. Isn't that good news? Amen. If you are fighting your own battles, that means you are in the way of your own victory. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Because Amen. Amen. I just get out of the way. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> if you are handling your own battles, that means that you don't trust him to fight on your behalf. Mm. 
Amen. Amen. If you're busy getting vengeance, that means you don't trust God when he says what? Vengeance is what? It's mine. It's mine. God says vengeance is mine. God yeah. says that. Yeah, don't steal from him. Yeah, you, you're stealing from him. You're trespassing what he said he'd do. And you got to understand, I understood, you know, as you live and learn, you learn these things. While you're trying to get back at somebody, maybe God's worked it out in their lives. When you're trying to measure out and what and bad stuff will happen, maybe that's where they were at that time. How many of you were in a bad place one time? Yeah. Come on, I know I got to win this somewhere. Amen. Some of y'all are in a bad place right now. I'm, not, I'm just not in a good place right now. And the last thing I need is someone to come against me with hostility. That's right. Because I understand I'm just in a bad space. But I want you to be able to come to Kingdom Praise Ministry in a bad space. And not be condemned because of that space you're in. Because some of us understand what it is to be in darkness. I know I got a witness somewhere. Yeah. Know what it is to be in darkness. Yeah. Some of us know what it is to be in a state of depression. Yeah. Some of us know what it is to be in a state of sickness. Mm -hmm. Some of us know what it is to be going through a dark time and our lives making serious decisions. We don't know which way to go. We understand that the last thing you need to come in is to find a bunch of religious, judgmental people. Mm -hmm. Preach. The last thing you need. Because what did that do? That push you back out to the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You ought to be able to come to the house of God and say, I feel comfortable, comfortable enough to share this with you, my brother and sister. Amen. Amen. And know that you got a few people who know when you tell them a secret, they'll keep your secrets. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody if you really mean it's your secrets or what? Say with me. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to tell you secrets. <laughs> Amen. But even if you can't find a person, I'm here to tell you, I can unjunk all my junk mm -hmm. before God and still hear him say, I'm still calling your name. Come on now, somebody. Amen. Still hear him say, when you got sin, I got mercy. Amen. Amen. Still hear him say, Although you may have changed your mind about serving me, I have not changed my mind about calling you. Y'all better give God some praise this place. Isn't that good news? How many can say I really blew it? I might blew it yesterday. I might blew it today. But I still know that every time I come back, God's got more grace than I got sin. He said when sin abound, grace does more abound. That's right. Amen. Amen. How many of you say this morning, mercy suits me this morning? Amen. Yes. Aren't you glad about it? Amen. If we read on Lamentation 3, you know what it says? Every morning you get brand new. Y'all better give God some praise. Every morning I get How many of you some brand new mercy? I wore mercy out yesterday, y'all. I wore mercy, beat mercy down. But this morning I woke up and opened my eyes to brand new, fresh mercies. And to a God who's not holding my past against me. But saying to me, you can't do a thing about what you have done, but you can do something about it right now. Amen. Yes. Come unto me, all oh, you that labor in heaven late. He said, What? And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy, he said. My burden is what well light. You know why his burden is light? Because he carries a load. That's right. Amen, amen. amen. He, how many know he carries a load? Amen. Yes, he, does. he wants us to rely on him. I want to read this psalm to you. Psalm four, take some time. I'm going to read this psalm to you. It's in Psalm 46, verse 1 to 11. Listen to this psalm. God is our refuge and our strength. Yes. Wow. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, Though the mountains shake with the swelling, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of our God, the holy place, the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nation raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. I'm so glad about it. Mm -hmm. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Yes. Come and behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. 
He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge and strength. Selah. At the end of that stanza means pause and think about it. The Lord is with you this morning. This is another reason to rejoice always. Because what? The Lord is near. You and I can take great comfort in knowing the nearness of God is with us. God is with us. We are never alone. Isn't it good news? Amen. I heard somebody say, somebody wrote it on Facebook and posted it. They said, every lonely person, person has an opportunity to develop a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So Amen. speak to the lonely ones. Mm -hmm. Amen. You don't have to always have somebody. Mm -hmm. You don't have to always have friends around you. Matter of fact, the people that always got to have friends around him are some sad people. Yes. You know why? Because you always got to have somebody propping you up and encouraging you. You got to have some distraction in their life. People running from the next party to the next party. Now they want to know where the next party is. They're not the happy people. Nope. I got your car. You're not the happy person. You out there. They got to have a party all the time. Because when you get alone, you're sad. When the party is only over, you have no completeness. But the person that is in touch with God can make it through any situation. Mm -hmm. I know I got a witness. I got a friend of mine, I'm going to call her name, she talked to her yesterday, we rejoiced and she lost so much, she lost husband, she lost both her children, and yet I called her, and all she was doing was rejoicing. Y'all hear me saying to you today, that's, that, 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 that's unheard of, that is unheard of, except if you're a child of God, and all she could talk about is how God was blessing her. Y'all hear me saying to you? And I said to her, well, you set an example for those of us that are following. An example to let us know how we're supposed to go through. She said, I'm not trying to do nothing. I'm just living my life. Amen. Amen. You would see a person like that and say, well, how could they keep going on? Almost like a Job situation. But see, Job lost his belongings, his cattle. Mm -hmm. His friends came and turned on him. Mm -hmm. And one thing Satan didn't touch was what? His wife. Yeah. <laughs> and somebody said what? Well, <laughs> That's his other curse. When they said, well, aren't you going to make his, take his wife too? He said, no, I'm going to leave her right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because she didn't want to stand outside, repeat what the devil said, do what? Yeah. Joe, curse God. Yeah. Curse God and die. The devil's <laughs> using her. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He lost everything, but yet he didn't lose everything. When he had to make it, was he had a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. He didn't understand what God was doing, but he said, get in my flesh, I'm going to see God. You know what he said? Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of faith we need, y'all. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't understand what you're doing. I don't understand how you're doing it. I can't see how this is going to work out. But I'm going to rely on you. You promise to never leave me. How many want to grab that today? Never leave you, no forsake me. Amen? Amen. God is for us. If God is for us, guess what? You're never helpless. God is for you, you're never alone. If God is with you and near you, you are never hopeless, never helpless, never forsaken. God is for us. The scripture says in Romans 8, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Amen. He's on your side. We in his favor. Our circumstances might be against us. Our health might be against us. Our family might be against us. Our enemies might be against us. Our frenemies might be against us. Y'all know what frenemies are? Smiling in your face. Yeah. How many guess are frenemies? <laughs> uh -huh. But if God be for us, who can launch a successful campaign against us? Oh, they're going to launch it, but guess what? Tell somebody it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Who can be against us? If God is in your corner, if God is on our side, 
Who can successfully be against us? The Lord is at hand. God is not only with us, even closer than that, God is in us. Amen. God is always at hand. In uh, uh, this is on. This is one of the great secrets for every child of God. I had a typo there. <laughs> this is one of the greatest secrets of the child of God. What is one of the greatest secrets? This is a source of our deepest comfort. The Lord is near. This is one of the strongest weapons we can use against worry, knowing that the Lord is near. It is not about how we feel. It's not about our emotions. It's not about uh, it's not about uh, 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 some circumstance around us. It's about the promises of God. It's not about us faking it. It's about us faithing it. Amen. Amen. That's how we're going to make it. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, faith it. Amen. Until you make it. Amen. 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 It's about faith in it. What am I going to do with my problems? I'm faith in it. What am I going to do with my obstacles? Come on, y'all. I'm faith in it. What am I going to do about my mountains? Why? Because the Lord is near. Amen. Amen. Not only so, but the Lord is soon to return. He's our refuge and our strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Faith it through it. Amen. Amen. Another great, a great secret, and I'm about to close, another great secret or weapon for overcoming our worry is this practice the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. goes along with him being near us. Practice his presence. What does that mean? You need to do this day by day. Practice the presence means to do this moment by moment. Practice his presence. What is the practice of his presence? When we realize that the Lord is present, we will live differently. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I'm about to leave y'all. When we when we live, we will, we, we will, uh, we will, uh, this will help us live a life of accountability. Mm -hmm. Why? Because what? God sees me. Mm -hmm. Uh, not accountability to man because I can hide stuff from man not accountable to a church not being accountable to a pastor not being accountable to a group organization but to God alone mm -hmm. we got to get out of this uh, this uh, mindset of saying we don't have time We got to get out of this mindset of saying, I got too much to do. We need to get out of the mindset of saying that I'm too busy. Because what we're really saying is that this is not a priority. Mm -hmm. Am I telling the truth? Y'all, we got to get out of that, right? So when people tell me they're too busy, when they got all the other things to do, it's not just too busy. Because we do what we want to do. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We're where we want to be. Amen. Amen. We do what we want to do in our priority list. Amen. Amen. So stop telling yourself, I don't have time. I would be in Bible study, but what? I'm too busy. No. <laughs> I would come to church. I would do these things, but what? No, I, I would get to church, but you know what? I got too many other responsibilities. But all we say to God is what? That stuff is not important to me. But this stuff is what matters. So I make time for it. I'm on time for it. And I give my time, my talents, and my treasures to it. You want to find out this year, I say it so often, I think Bash, Bash I mentioned last week. If you want to find out what's important in your life, you want to find out what God you serve, it's real simple. Look at your checkbook. Y'all mm -hmm. real quiet there. <laughs> but I'm speaking truth. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Our Lord Jesus, in close, our Lord Jesus, he gave a lot of parables in Scripture. 
all of them about weights and measures. Because he knew this. If I get that heart, I got that pocket. If I got that pocket, I know who they're serving. Because where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Take a good look this year, amen. Not how much I can accumulate, but look at where my priorities lie. Yeah. And there you will find the true God you worship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's heavy in it. Amen. There you will find the true God you worship. And if you're anything like me, you won't deny it, but you'll say to God, have mercy yes. on me, a sinner who would prioritize everybody but you. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner who deserves nothing of your grace. And help me now, Lord, to serve you in an acceptable way. And I thank you for your forgiveness <laughs> and grace. Amen. 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 That's the way you deal with conviction. That's the way you deal with putting God first. That's the way you seek first the kingdom of God and all these things should be added to your life. So maybe today if somebody in the sound of my voice, you say, you know what? That word cut me. And it, and it was a simple word. But I realized in so many areas of my life, I have not prioritized Christ. But now is your time to say, Lord, you know what? I got to stop playing. Mm -hmm. 2024, I want more. I want more out of life. I want more out of my relationship. I now come to ask you to come in my life and save, my, save me. Be my Savior, be my Lord. Sure enough, I confess my idols of money, of greed, materialism. I confess those things. I confess my idols before you, those idols that got in the way. I confess my priorities, but now I want you to be my priority. You pray that and pray it right, God will come in and turn your life around. Mm -hmm. I know I got at least one or two witnesses in the room somewhere. Yes. Amen. God will turn your life around. Y'all look not quiet. Do I have a witness somewhere? Has yeah. God ever turned your life around? Yeah. Yes. Somebody <laughs> said, well, he's still turning. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He's still working. I need to call. How many need a caution cone? How many need you some caution cones? Amen. <laughs> Amen. God, get some caution cones for you. That he's still working on me. Amen. Amen. God bless. Um, receive him today as your Savior Lord. What a perfect time for us to enter into our communion service this morning. After, uh, after a um, uh, convicting portion of scripture, we make sure the communion table is not our table. We we thank God for, matter of fact, we thank God for how many glad just to see the first Sunday of another year. Amen. Amen. A lot of folk want to be in this in your shoes right now. Amen. It started out in 23, didn't make it. Yeah. Amen. But God has allowed us to see another year. Amen. The first time you're here, we have some guests here. Thank God for you guests that are coming in today. Amen. We love you. We're so glad you come to be with us. Amen. We started the year right. Amen. 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 Pressing your way out to come to the house of the Lord. And we thank God for you to come with us. Thank God for each one of you here. But make this decision today in your heart that you're going to give Christ your life. Amen. 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 Not just coming to church. You're giving him a life. Not just throwing a prayer every now and then, but you're giving him a life. So he can now take control of your life. Do that. You'll find a new year being a new year. Amen. Amen. All things become all old things become old. All things that become new in Christ Jesus. So, Father, as I come today, we thank you as we enter into our communion expression today. We come that you prepare our hearts as the scriptures being read. Prepare our hearts, O oh God, to uh, dine with you and reflect upon who you are. We thank you. Let the word of God take root in someone's life and bring forth much fruit. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. The wife's going to come. And read uh, some scriptures before us concerning communion. I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 34. And I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 34. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he were betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, 
saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whosoever eat this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drink in an unworthy manner eats and drink judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned in the world. Therefore, my brethren, when, you're, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment. And the rest I will set in order when I come. Amen. 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 You're training. Yeah. Bill. <laughs> Father, bless these elements as they serve as a symbol of what you've done for us in Christ Jesus. And we thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, as we're preparing. You at home that have your communion package, please join us this morning in this virtual communion. I was thinking this morning, I've heard um, some, some people uh, discouraged doing virtual communion because they say it's not right and so forth. But I think that this is one of the best things we could do because if you have your communion packets with you, or wafer and some bread with you, some and some wine or some juice with you, you can join in virtually all over the world with us in a communion service, something we can't do in a building. And I thank God for the technology. I embrace the technology. What I want us to do is think about what we read in the scripture. We come to this table. It's, not our, it's the Lord's table. Amen. Every believer is welcome to this table. He told us to, Jesus said, we do this until he comes back, so we look forward. He said, do this until he comes. Um, he, do this in remembrance of him. We look backwards. Then he says, let a man that judges himself, he says, look inside. Y'all got that three looks. We're looking forward, we're looking backwards, and we're looking inside. So take a moment to talk to God about you. Let a man judge himself, and so let him come. Anything you know you need to get right before God right now, get that thing right so we can come before the Lord's table in the proper way. Give you a minute. Amen. I know some of us need more time. <laughs> but let you continue a conversation at home with the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but now the body of Christ is broken for us. Let us eat together. This cup represents his blood, the new covenant we have with him. He said he write his laws on our hearts. Thank God. Let's drink together. God bless you. We can have the privilege to be able to experience our first communion Sunday. In the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 Well, you may be seated in God's presence. I'm going to have Mike close us out in prayer. And I'll come back with benediction. Minister Evans. Heavenly Father, thank you for once again allowing us to see a brand new year, a brand new day, a brand new hour. Thank you for every breath that you've given us, Lord. We can't say thank you enough. Thank you, Lord. We know that all things in creation come from you. And your hand touches every aspect of our life. So we need to know that any woes that are laden upon our heart, we can give back to you, Lord. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this lesson. Thank you for the reminder of, that we should be rejoicing no matter what the situation is. Any kind of fear, any anxiety, anything that, that holds us back, we can give to you. You are our strength. By myself, I fall every time, but with you, I can conquer any obstacle. You're my king, my savior, my, my, my shepherd. I shall not wander away from you, Lord. Mm. Thank you for lead, leading me to still waters, peaceful times. You give me joy, grace, peace, 
love and abundance, Lord. I can't help but reflect on the darkness I used to live in, but you brought me to the light. Yes, God, thank you. I can't say thank you enough, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all you're doing through this ministry, all you're going to do through this ministry. Every, every, every soul in the sound of my voice, we know that you have your hand on each individual one of us. There's nothing you cannot do. You're omnipresent. You're everywhere at once. You know the thoughts before we even think it, Lord, but you love us in spite of us. I've given you a million reasons not to like me, but you never changed Thank your you. mind on loving me, Lord. Thank you. You love me in spite of me. Help me to love others in spite of them as well. Yes, Lord. Help me to love like you love, Lord. Help me to bring the same joy in every room that you bring me on a regular basis, Lord. You, you taught me that over time that you've given the power to change the atmospheres through you and through you alone. I have no power, but you have all the grace. You have all the peace. And the love that you've given us, we're given to share amongst one another. Lord, help us guide more people to your way. Allow us to show the love in, every, in everything we do, everywhere we go, on the job, at work, while we're driving. That person that cuts us off, we still got to love them. <laughs> whoever, whoever spites us, help us, love. help us love them. Because no matter how many times we've fallen short of your glory, how many times we've sinned, knowingly sinning against you, you didn't change your mind on loving us. Lord, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We can't say thank you enough. We'll be here all day, all, all millennium. Hallelujah. Just thank you, thank you Lord. for all that you've done for us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for the grace, Hallelujah. the peace, the love, the joy as we go up through our weeks, our days, our months. Allow us to continuously see you in, in all that we do. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 <clears throat> Let's look to the Lord. Be dismissed. Everyone standing. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. King Praise Ministry signing out.